What is up, people? I've been sitting here and dreaming that I could once again play one of my favorite MMORPGs of all time and got to thinking how great the housing system was in Wildstar and how Intrepid could look for inspiration from this to take some of the best features from Wildstar's housing and put it into Ashes of Creation. For those of you who don't know, Wildstar was an MMORPG from 2014 to 2018 created by Carbine Studios, which is now closed. Eventually, the game was shut down the studio was sold and we all had to be sad about it and never jump into our cool houses again. Although the game itself had mixed reviews and wasn't the perfect MMORPG in a lot of people's minds, it still had in my opinion what was one of the best housing systems I have ever seen in an MMO. Not only making your home feel like a fun place to hang out, but also made it rewarding no matter what level you were and allowed it to be extremely customizable and this all worked well because it was instance housing, everybody had their own plot of land floating up in the sky and it wasn't actually in the world. Ashes of Creation has two types of housing. Well, technically three if you count freeholds. There is non-instance housing within a node that you can buy at node stage three or above and they will level up as the node does. As the nodes level up, more houses become available and those first houses that were purchased become larger. These guys are limited in fashion though, so you either grab them first or you buy them from another player later on at most likely a higher price. They also have instanced housing called apartments. They again come at a limited capacity, 50 to apartment building, but no Node mayors can choose to build more apartment buildings for its citizens at node stage 4. Houses are tied to citizenship and they are one of the ways that you can make that node your permanent home, but you can only be a citizen of one node at a time. Unfortunately, the way Intrepid is designing these, this will exclude some players from having houses. There are ways around this as nodes can be destroyed and built someplace else, along with always being the option to migrate toward another node to get a home, spreading out the population, and mayors can build more apartments, but still with 10,000 players per server, there probably won't be enough houses for everybody. Once you buy this house, you can then purchase furniture for these houses from other players, or craft it and rearrange them how you see fit, along with gaining additional storage, the ability to harvest small amounts of resources, and more. But any furnishing items in the game that have an actual in-game functionality, which I assume means being able to be interacted with and sat on and all of that, they will be restricted entirely to the carpentry profession, meaning you won't find these guys in world drops. You can though get trophies for boss kills and things like that to hang up in your home that obviously wouldn't be crafted. Then there are freeholds. These are plots of land that can be placed freely within a node zone of influence, as long as they meet certain parameters. They allow you to build various crafting stations on these freeholds, open up taverns, inns, guild halls, stables, and more. But there is only one allowed per account. These also have a bit more customization than houses where there are building skins that you can change up the way some of your buildings look. So how exactly does this hold up to Wildstar? Well, Wildstar's instance housing could be acquired by any player in the game as long as they had the money for it. Then once purchased, you were given what was called a sky plot and these plots had NPCs and such that were hanging out that you would need to clear out before you could build your campsite. Eventually, with time and resources, your campsite would upgrade its way to a fully customizable house. And when I say customizable, I mean it. You could change the wallpaper, the floors, the rooms, the decorations, and the straight-up structure of the home itself, along with adding various plugs of land on your sky plot, similar to how the way the freeholds will work. These plugs added things such as gardens, mines, target dummies, workbenches, daily quests for the player, dungeon portals, and things like that. All of the furniture in your house would come from quests, drop from NPC monsters, along with through crafting. If you logged out in your house, you'd get more rested XP than logging out anywhere else in the world. And the more furniture you had in the house, the more rested XP that you could get. You'd also have the ability to teleport to your house at any time, and with the Ashes of Creation's no fast travel method, you definitely can expect that this will not be a thing in Ashes. But along with that, there was a big social aspect to this. You could set your sky plot to be closed so no one could visit you, you could set it for friends only, or you could set it to open where everybody in the server could come visit it freely. And you could even re recruit your friends to help you with it. If you were going on vacation or just for some reason didn't have time to log into a computer, your friends could come harvest your goods for you so when you returned, you had them. A lot of Wildstar's housing sounds like freeholds in the sense where you can add lots of crafting mentions or taverns or various different things to the plots on your freehold. But the housing system outside of freeholds is kind of bland and seems very limited. I don't expect you to be able to fully customize the outside of your non-instance house because you want it to fit the aesthetic of the node that you are in and 
Wildstar was a much more animated game where this kind of wacky customization made a lot more sense in the world. But customization is still one of the best parts of player housing in my opinion, and having it be very extensive gives the player to make it feel like it's their own thing and not just some random house that you can play some chairs in. I would love to have houses directly in the middle of your character progression, making it so you feel more obligated to go back to it every day or share it with your friends, and I think the rested XP buff that Wildstar did is a great place to start. The idea that friends could also show up and help you harvest goods at your freehold would be a great addition to the system. Yes, you can hire NPC hands, but perhaps you'd be able to save a little bit if a friend came by and lent a hand instead. The more to the system Intrepid adds to strengthen the player attachment to their house, the more likely players will be passionate about defending their node if a siege comes. And if a siege does wipe out your house, then maybe for an additional fee you could grab the blueprint to your house to have the exact setup when you acquire a new one. What are some of your favorite housing features in MMORPGs? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you are new to Ashes and have yet to create an account so you can jump in on the forums or grab some cosmetics, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where all referrals will go towards benefiting this channel. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.